What's up guys, Ben here. And today we're gonna be checking out one of my favorite motorcycles of all time, the Indian Scout Rogue. Now the cool thing about the Indian Scout Rogue is it basically derives from the Indian Scout platform, uh, which you guys I'm sure are familiar with. Indians had the, the Scout out for quite some time. And of course they have the Indian Scout Bobber, which is really kind of where this bike derives from. Now this is where the Rogue is set apart from the Scout Bobber. So the Scout Bobber, obviously all the Scouts have the same tank design, the same frame, and the same engine. If you're already familiar with the Scout Bobber lineup, you'll see some similarities. Rear fender actually kind of carries over from the Scout Bobber. The pipes carry over, the rear white wheel, the tire, seat not so much. The seat is unique to the Rogue. This motor, of course, they use for all the Scout lineups, the Scout uh, Scout Bobber, the Scout Rogue. And that's basically, uh, aside from the tank design, a Scout Bobber. What sets the Rogue apart is the larger cast front wheel. So what they did was they actually put a 19 inch front wheel in this bad boy. We got a 130, 60 by 19 tire on there. And you have this big 19 inch cast wheel, like I say, is, is unique to the Rogue models. Now, something else that sets the Scout Rogue apart from the rest of the lineup is the quarter fairing. Obviously in the world where everybody wants that club style look, that really cool custom club style Sons of Anarchy type look, uh, this has a little bit of that design uh, factored in with that quarter fairing up front. Um, now we have to keep the bars obviously comfortable for the customer. This bike is sold, so the bars are rolled back. Uh, but obviously I know the one thing that a lot of people do, one of the things that makes this bike really adaptable to everybody's, everybody's riding position are the, the bar clamps on this. You can pretty much just about set any kind of bar on this thing that you want. And you can, uh, you know, kind of customize it and make it your own. And yeah, that quarter fairing is awesome. I think they did a really good job picking that thing out. It really sets the bike off. It's a very clean setup, clean design, really finishes off the bike. And I think really adds to that front end along with that 19 inch front, uh, front rim. Now, some of you guys might already be familiar with, uh, let's say the Scout Bobber 20 edition. The Scout Bobber 20 came with the la uh, comes with the laced wheels, comes with the taller bars. Uh, whereas this comes with cast wheels, this also comes with the taller bars. So if you look, we got a nice set of little mini apes on this thing. And honestly, I'm about six foot two, so uh, attention to you taller riders. If you're thinking about jumping into the Scout platform, this might be the bike for you. Uh, and I'll jump into the seat position here in just a minute, but these bars really make this bike uh, super duper comfortable. Um, I think it helps with the design. Obviously it looks really cool. It's a really neat design, but these bars really aid in comfort. Personally, on the Scout Bobber lineup, the bars that come on the true bobber are a little bit too far forward for me. It's, it's almost like riding uh, like a cafe racer almost with your feet way forward in front of you. These bars really aid in comfort and obviously style. And then one other thing that I really wanna jump into is this seat. Uh, now, what sets, the, uh, this is kind of another thing that really sets the Rogue apart from the rest of the lineup uh, is this seat. Now, this is what they call the Rogue seat. They also have a Rogue two-up seat as well, which is a rider and a passenger. Obviously, this is not that seat. This is just for the rider. Um, you can step up to, if you want to carry a passenger, you can go up to the Rogue two-up seat. But what I really like about this seat is if you kind of look from a profile view, um, you have that rear portion of the seat, which is this right up here. Uh, it's going to help kind of keep you held in the seat. It doesn't feel like you're hanging on for dear life or anything. It doesn't feel like you're going to fly off. Obviously, this is a 100 horsepower bike. Uh, so this thing has a lot of torque, a lot of power. Um, and I really like this seat. I think Indian uh, made a really good choice throwing the seat on the Rogue along with the bars. Again, it's a really comfortable riding position. The other thing too is I don't feel being a six foot two rider, it doesn't feel like this seat pushes you too far forward. It actually has almost a little bit of an extended reach uh, feel to it, honestly. Um, and as opposed to me on a regular Scout Bobber, we'll say, uh, I don't feel as cramped, I'll be honest with you. So along with these bars that they have on this bike, and this, uh, this Rogue seat, I think they made a really good decision going with, the, with this design. And it's very comfortable. Again, being a six foot one, six foot two rider, the bars, the seat, it's all very comfortable for me personally, maybe for you. 
Um, everybody's, you know, everybody's got a different riding position, different preference and stuff like that, but I think they made a really good decision with this seat and it looks really, really cool. So we've pretty much covered everything that makes the Rogue different from the rest of the lineup. We've covered the seat, we've covered the larger front cast wheel on this bike, we've covered the quarter fairing and the bars. So we have a seat, wheel, quarter fairing, and bars. That is what really sets the Rogue apart from the rest of the lineup. Let alone, this is the only bike that you can actually purchase from Indian that is completely blacked out. So when you get the Indian Scout Rogue Midnight Edition, everything is truly blacked out to the bone. Now, the only thing I didn't do is turn the key so you guys can see the display. And I really like this display. This is actually very similar to the display that's on my Chief. I really like that blacked out design. This gives you all the information you could possibly need. Uh, it tells you your, obviously, your, well, here, I'll turn the key on and show you guys. I'll quit talking. So obviously you got your spinometer, which is the analog display. Down here you have a gear indicator. You get your time there at the bottom, and then your odometer there on the right. And obviously you have your indicator lights like turn signals and low beam and high beam, and your neutral indicator is up there. ABS, this bike does have ABS. The only reason that's light, that light is on is because I'm sitting still. Now you have a little trigger button up here that you can actually cycle through the display. And when I push that button, right there, it takes me to my tripometer, my tachometer, which is where I usually keep it, your battery voltage, which is really nice to know, and then your back your odometer. It's very simple. So, and last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and fire the bike up here for you so you guys can hear what the pipes sound like. does have different bar designs if you want to get some different accessory bars you can do that they as i had mentioned have different seats uh if you decide to get a backrest they have a fixed backrest and they have a removable backrest like a quick release all that mounts obviously right here this is where your passenger seat would go if you get the uh the two-piece rider and passenger obviously if you get the one-piece design um that frees up these so those pretty much just stay right there uh, i'm scooting around here i really like the tail section of this bike um, you have integrated brake light and taillights, right? Uh, brake light, taillight, and turn signals. Uh, so there's no dedicated taillight, but it is integrated in with your turn signals here. And then everybody really likes uh, the swing arm style uh, license plate brackets, which Indian, obviously, they have to tr tr try and make everything legal for the road to pass a 50 state inspection. So this is kind of where they went with that design right here, kind of coming off the side of the fender right there. And you get the inspection light there, which is LED. So really cool design. I know I've seen a lot of folks put some swing arm style uh, license plate brackets, but personally, I think this is a really cool design. Something else that's really neat. Now you can do this on the entire Scout lineup. Uh, you do have adjustable shocks. Now this is just setting the preload. You'll see you have these, these rungs right here. Uh, if you have a spanner wrench in your garage at home, fit the spanner wrench right there on those rungs and you can tighten or soften the preload. Uh, that's that has nothing to do with the internals of the shock at all. This is literally just preloading, just like the name preload. It's preloading the spring tension. Now, not all of the bikes come with this. Some of the base level Scout uh, do not have this feature, but you do have a USB charger right there. So if you want to plug your phone in, everybody's been getting the RAM the RAM mounts or the quad lock mounts to hold your phone up here. If you want to charge your phone for GPS purposes or just charge it up, period, you get a little USB right there hidden right inside the uh, speedometer bucket. So that's pretty cool. Now, I didn't really cover a whole lot as far as like specifics. So uh, I did kind of there at the beginning of the video. What really is the Scout? Uh, what's the Scout Bobber, um, the Scout Bobber 20, the Scout Rogue? These bikes are Indians We'll say midsize. They they do kind of classify this bike as their midsize motorcycle. Um, they have, and if you're doing any kind of research with Indian, obviously you have your Scout lineup and your Scout 60 lineup. They have a Scout Bobber 60. They have a Scout Rogue 60 as well. Anytime you see Scout 60, that's standing 60 cubic inches. What that means, which means it's a 990 cc, uh, 999 cc liquid cooled five speed motorcycle. 
Uh, so anytime you see Scout or Scout Bobber or Scout Rogue without the 60, that means it is a six speed 1133cc engine. So it's a six speed. So you go from a 999cc five speed to a 1133cc uh, six speed. Try not to get myself confused there. Now the Scout is what Indian started with a couple of years ago. Back in like 2013, 2014, you, you had your choice of the Indian Scout and I think the uh, the Chief Vintage and the Roadmaster. Uh, so the Scout, um, basically over a couple of years, people wanted a little bit more to pick from. So then you went to the Scout Bobber, which had the shorter bars, um, had the chopped fenders, different wheel and tire packages and stuff like that. Um, and the Bobber had a little bit more of that custom bobber look just like the name so the scout was meant to be that true traditional american v-twin classic cruiser the bobber meant to be a little bit more that aggressive um, ride hard put it away dirty type bike uh, and then of course you have the scout bobber 20 edition which comes with the laced wheels the different paint schemes and uh, the taller bars and then of course like we just covered you have the indian scout rogue all these variations are basically the same package um, you're starting with that same, it's all got the same frame, the same motor. They're all five speed or six speed um, liquid cooled bikes. Indian was really smart in creating this platform to be able to kind of build up and uh, create a bike to fit everybody's different uh, design preference and comfort level. All right, so who is this bike for? The nice thing is I had mentioned you have the entire Scout lineup to pick from. If, if you're ready to go midsize, um, whether it be a first bike, second bike, third bike, um, we have people that have come in that have been riding for 30 or 40 years and they've switched to a Scout, which isn't a bad idea. You're talking about a 545 pound, 550 pound motorcycle. It is one of the most smoothest riding motorcycles I've ever ridden in my time of riding, my time of being here at Twig Cycles for 10 years and riding for 13 or 14 years or so. It is without a doubt one of the smoothest riding motorcycles I've ever been on. Um, and like I say, it's very lightweight. Um, so whether you go with a Scout 60 as a beginner or the regular Scout, you're not going to make a mistake. The biggest thing that you have to make the decision on is what style riding you see yourself doing. If you're going to do some long distance riding, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and get the true scout with the sixth gear that way you have a little bit more longevity out of the bike um you know now fifth gear on the scout 60 is not screaming don't get me wrong um you can still do long distance i know a ton of people that do long distance riding on the scout 60 lineup um my personal preference go ahead if you're going to be doing long distance just pay the extra dollar and and get the six speed um get the extra the extra umph out of it the extra horsepower um, you know, your Scout 60, I think if I remember correctly, and, and you guys are going to point me out on this for not knowing, uh, if I remember correctly, the Scout 60s are right around that 75, give or take 75 horsepower, whereas the regular Scout is a hundred horsepower. Now don't let that scare you. Don't let that throw you off. This is still a very, um, I won't say learner centered, but this is a definitely, I'll say confidence boosting motorcycle. This isn't anything that's going to scare you. It's not anything that's gonna throw you off the back seat unless you try to. Um, it is still a 100 horsepower bike and it still has plenty of torque and, and you know, um, you can rip on it and have fun. But as a beginner, if you're nervous, I'd probably maybe start on a Rebel 500 or a 300 or something like that, or like a Vulcan S. But if you're a beginner and you're thinking about this bike, I can promise you, you're gonna get adapted to it very well. Uh, as I had mentioned, it's a very confidence boosting motorcycle. It's one of the smoothest, one of the easiest bikes to handle. And uh, even as, a, as an experienced rider, someone who's been you know, taught the safety course for five and a half years and have been riding for 13 odd years. Uh, again, this is one of the, the, the most smoothest riding, easiest handling motorcycles I've ever been on. And I absolutely love the Scout lineup. As I mentioned, one other thing too, uh, for those of you who are already experienced riders and you're thinking about getting into something that uh, maybe is a little bit lighter, um, again, obviously they have different variations for different size riders. Everybody's a different height and different weight. There's obviously, there's a scout to fit your needs. Uh, obviously, if you're a taller rider, you might want to consider jumping into something like this. It has a more comfortable seat, uh, a little bit more space, taller bars, that kind of thing, adjustable bars. 
Um, if you want something that's more aggressive, obviously go with the Scout Bobber. Has more of that, you know, cafe racer, you know, kind of like an aggressive lean to it a little bit. Uh, but if you're looking to just do some traditional, uh, just just go out for a cruise, then you obviously you have that traditional Indian Scout that you can lean back on. So that is my scoop on the Indian Scout Rogue. As you guys know, if you follow me already, if you have any questions, you can always call me at 301-739-2773, or you can always just leave your questions in the comments section below. Um, please do me a favor, help me blow this video up. Uh, I'm trying to get my, my viewer count up there. I'm trying to get as many people to watch my videos. Uh, as I had mentioned long ago, I do these videos to be as informative uh, as possible. I'm trying to get up close and personal with all these motorcycles so you guys know what you're getting into, what you're ordering, because we live in a world now where a lot of the bikes that we want and ATVs and scooters just aren't in stock, so we have to order it. So my goal is to try and get everybody um, as in tune as possible with what they're thinking of ordering. Uh, that way it helps kind of take out a lot of that guessing game. So if you guys can help me out, like and subscribe, share this video, and I appreciate it. Your boy Ben is out.